Nima, just when I thought I was understanding space-time, the idea that the three dimension of space and the one of time are really the same thing as Einstein showed, just when I thought I was understanding that, you come along and tell me that space-time is doomed. Why? Well, space-time is doomed as a really elementary consequence of the existence of both quantum mechanics and gravity. And we say space-time is doomed because um, uh, if you think space-time is something real, then you should be able to meaningfully talk about separations of space and separations in time of uh, any arbitrary amount that you like. So uh, we can talk about separations in time of seconds, separation in space of meters, but you should also be able to talk about it at arbitrarily short times and arbitrarily short distances. And we know that that's impossible uh, be because of gravity, because if we try to probe very, very tiny distances by the uncertainty principle, we have to use a lot of energy and when we get to tiny enough distances, we have to use so much energy that we collapse a little region of space-time we're trying to look at into a black hole. And that makes it impossible to probe what's going on in that region. Because so much energy by E equals mc squared, Einstein's famous equation, means that there's so much mass, the mass and the energy curve, space-time, and it all collapses. Exactly. Like and black they make hole. it impossible to see the region you were trying to look at. So this is a very simple thought experiment that... Uh, uh, that takes together the two basic ingredients, quantum mechanics, gravity. You put together quantum mechanics and, and, and gravity, and you see that, that it's simply impossible to make sense of space and time separations that are smaller than a very tiny amount. But, uh, but, the, but the, the, the distances and times that we're talking about are the Planck length, the Planck time, Planck length 10 to the minus 33 centimeters, the Planck time 10 to the minus 43 seconds. So we know that space and time, just from this simple argument, can't really make sense uh, because we can't uh, we, we we can't talk about arbitrary separations in space. So let me understand if I what that would mean. That would mean that you, you cannot have space and and neither space nor time being continuous down to these very 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 small exactly exactly lengths or or or, or moments. And that at those moments there's some sort of a separation. And does that mean that space and time become quantized and and just like electromagnetic radiation right. has a photon and that everything is in, in, in little discrete bits? That is the most sort of naive idea for what might be happening. Thank you. Okay. That's, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and, um, and in fact, the, there are approaches to quantum gravity which take that naive idea very seriously. Okay, good. I'm glad to see uh, somebody takes and, that seriously. Um, uh, but, uh, but I suspect, and, and many other people suspect, that that's, that's, that's too naive. One of the reasons it's too naive is that this discreteness, discrete character of space and time is in great conflict with special relativity. Hmm. Because, uh, because after all, if you say in, in some reference frame, um, uh, I can't talk about time separations yeah, that are smaller yeah. than a certain tiny amount, uh, uh, Einstein tells you that there's another frame of reference moving relative to the first one at a very high speed where those separations in time become a lot larger. Okay? Uh, and s similar arguments can be made for, for spatial separations. It's very hard to lay down some kind of discrete lattice-like structure on space-time okay, in a way that's compatible with the laws of relativity. So it's not that. It isn't that there are some atoms of space and time. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's yeah. the most naive sort of idea. But yeah. there's something much more subtle and interesting going on. In fact, there's an amazing idea known as holography that, that, begins, to give an, a, a, that begins to give us an idea for, the, for a more radical picture for how this discreteness happens, mm. which is that if you're trying to describe what's going on in this region of space and time, um, you might think, again, you might think that they're little little <laughs> cells, little uh, building pieces, blocks, yeah. pieces of, of, of space and time. Maybe they're around a Planck length big each or yeah, a Planck time. Right, right. But, uh, but uh, as you see, that, that, that leads you to suspect that in a given volume of space, there's somehow uh, the volume divided by this unit Planck yeah. uh, uh, volume yeah. of number of sort of bits of information yeah. that you need to specify in order to right. see what is going on. Um, uh, but holography is the idea that, in fact, it's a drastically smaller number of, uh, of bits of information that you need to specify that isn't restricted to the volume of the space, but it's instead restri restricted to the boundary of the space. The surface. And, uh, the surface. So that, so that, the, so that uh, the number of uh, bits that you need to specify um, is the area of the surface in Planck units. Okay? Uh, now, that sounds that's counterintuitive. A, it's completely counterintuitive, <laughs> and the reason, it, and that's 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 the uh, reason for the word uh, 
uh, hologram is that it's roughly the way in which uh, three-dimensional information is encoded in a two-dimensional hologram. Now, we know that the, a 2D hologram encodes three-dimensional information in very subtle ways. Uh, and similarly, what's going on inside a, a volume of space is encoded in very subtle ways in terms of what's going on at the boundary. Now, this is a qualitative idea that has been made incredibly sharp in string theory in the last 10 years, where, uh, furthermore, it gives us our first example of the notion of emergent space, at least. You know, from the general argument I told you before, space-time has got to emerge from something. Um, but uh, in certain kinds of space-time, which are 10-dimensional, it's string theory, it has all this complicated, wonderful stuff in it, um, uh, we understand that there's a completely equivalent description to what's going on in the space-time that lives on the boundary of the space-time in terms of a four-dimensional ordinary theory of particles, not terribly dissimilar from the standard model of particle physics itself. No gravity, no extra dimensions, four-dimensional. Um, of course, it's different in detail from the standard model, but it's the same kind of theory. It's known as a quantum field theory, ordinary theory without gravity. And this ordinary theory without gravity describes everything uh, that goes on in the bulk of this space, which has 10 dimensions, strings, gravity, and everything else. So, um, so, uh, so string theory isn't, um, uh, one of the things we've learned about it in the last 10 years is it's not a theory of strings. Um, and, uh, and there's something much more surprising and uh, interesting going on than points being replaced by little <laughs> extended objects. Uh, this idea of holography is one of them, which, which seems very deep. Um, and which we have a very concrete example of, which also gives us examples of the idea of uh, emergent space. Um, what we don't know how to do is to extend these ideas to include time. Uh -huh. And clearly, we have to understand time if we want to understand these questions about cosmology, about the multiverse, about, uh, uh, about our accelerating universe. A anything to do with the word time <laughs> and cosmology, uh, we're in confusion in, uh, right now. We don't know how to generalize our current ideas to incorporate them. So, so what would follow from this concept of emergent space and emergent time, emergent space time? Um, what would follow, what, 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 uh, without understanding emergent space time, we don't know how to address any of the really fundamental questions that ultimately putting quantum mechanics and gravity we're supposed to address what happens at the center of a black hole what what the origin of the universe means um, uh, and uh, so and emergent time is the one is is a clear intellectual bottleneck um, uh, emergent space sort of seems like child's play <laughs> in 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 comparison um, and we really don't have an idea of how to do that and that's that's the that sort of key stumbling block in figuring out the rest of the of, of, of the mysteries of, of, of cosmology that that we have to confront.